All right, thanks, thanks, Michael. So, Jeff or Lisa, do you guys have any introductory comments to to make before we dive in? Yeah, I, I think that that you know, following you know the meeting with you guys on Friday, we did have uh, our first session uh, with two board members this morning, and we are in the process of incorporating some of those comments. <clears throat> I think some of the comments came out of Friday as well. You know, with looking at some you know, thumbnails of, of the project and, and breaking uh, some of it up to make it a little more understandable. Um, <clears throat> I think the other thing that, that popped up today was with regard to um, identifying the impact on education in the MPSA building as well as the Career Center, you know, with the construction. And uh, I think the final thing was is, is how to address the fact that we're not um, necessarily addressing what the uh, existing career center uh, would become and you know the MPSA <clears throat> renovation in, in the future and and how would that be addressed so I think we, we've got some of that I think Ben's going to go through some of the the changes in the slides that we've made uh, and we have two more uh, board two by twos on uh, on Wednesday right? one's a one by one by one <laughs> one by two, and uh, well, Marigold can come to that perspective. Great. <clears throat> so anyway, all good. All yours, Ben. Hey, great. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, can you confirm that my screen's projecting? It is. You see it? Great. All right. So I, th I, th I think since uh, y'all had seen this material on Friday, I'll, I'll just go through in the way that we're tracking changes, we kind of highlight revisions in red text. Um, so the version that, that we reviewed on Friday was, I think it was extremely similar, or identical to what was distributed to the board members on Friday. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we're tracking revisions against that document just for, for everybody's sanity and for clarity, so that um, part of the part of the discussion has been around this the idea of permanent seats. You know, how much do each of these scenarios add to to permanent capacity um, at our site? So we we have clarified on on this side sort of the the base ed spec versus the the alternative ed spec and the different levels of new permanent secondary seats that are added uh, to the building. I'll explain it a little bit. Uh, in greater detail uh, captured on this on this slide. So we take into consideration the existing Career Center building has a permanent capacity of 950 seats. So when we we basically compare that value against the maximum capacity in either scenario, and that's how we arrive at the at the new permanent seats that are added. So we're trying to keep the language clear between because we know that there's more students in that at the existing site, but we're we're um, accommodating those students in, in temporary facilities in the in the relocatable classrooms. So that's uh, that's important clarification that that we had we had been asked to make. Um, and the only the only other revision on this slide was sort of some some language changes and consolidating the um, Arlington Tech seats to a single to a single amount for for clarity and for um, uh, comparison purposes. So that was really the the only change here um, and was intended mostly to just be some clarifications and responding to, to questions that were were asked. Yeah, I think that the, the thing with the middle school, high school is, is they're all yeah. secondary seats and we just wanted to call them secondary seats essentially. So is, um, so ed specs for middle school and high school would be the same? No, they're not exactly the same, but the seats can be used for, for secondary seats regardless. We were designing it for a middle school program because they have specific requirements in the ed spec, but those spaces can be used uh, for, for um, any secondary uh, class or academic or, or tech program. So we're, we're, we're designing it for that specific use, but they, they can, you know, be used as secondary seats. They're, they'll be flexible. Uh, 
All right, I'll I'll uh, just carry. Rebecca, do you have a follow up question, or should I carry? Well, on? just uh, you know, I have lots of questions about enrollment, but um, I won't bother anybody here with that. But but so if we dropped because originally Arlington Tech is six hundred, right? That's the current. If you added four fifty to to six hundred, that's where you're the you're saying the base is just that combined, instead of the alternative is just. It's just capacity as is, basically, is kind Correct. of a change. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I got gotcha. you. But you wouldn't, they wouldn't consider, or as part of that, like maybe they would take 600 Arlington Tech High School and make it 800 Arlington Tech High School. And then it would, they may not grow a middle school program, but they may grow the high school program. Yes, they, they could do anything or, or make a modification down the road. The board asked us in an earlier presentation. They said, you're, you're, when I think when we first talked about the ed spec, you know, can these seats be used for high school? Should we decide to not have a middle school program? Absolutely. They're secondary spaces. And Rebecca, because it's a lottery school, you know, part of the nice part of this, and this goes back to the facil community facility study, being real flexible with the use can be responsive to what we're seeing across other middle or high schools. So that gives us some, you know, that gives us some leeway if we should, especially as projections are changing right now and we know they're going to be different with the yeah. enrollment levels this year. Yeah, no, 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 I, I'm all for the, the flexibility and, and my questions about Arlington Tech enrollment again are, are for a different um, venue. All right, thanks Rebecca. Um, I'll carry on and then I believe uh, Rosie you made a comment about the graphics bringing them sooner so we, we did make that change uh, and it went fairly well in the briefing this morning so thank you for that um, no changes to the to the massing images uh, we did distinguish um, we had done so later in the in the presentation sort of distinguishing the dates completion dates into two major milestones. One would be the school is complete, and then the second is all construction is complete. Uh, so we simply added that distinction to sort of identify, um, just call out uh, the phase and nature of the job. And then uh, likewise, when we get into the detail phasing, we carried those dates forward. I, I think that was another suggestion from y'all on Friday. Uh, so we have the overall completion at the top bar, but then also within the text, we identify the school completion uh, date as well and sort of, it, you know, graphic or, you know, sequentially, you could see when those things are, are being completed relative to other other tasks. So I think that that was a good that was a good suggestion, a good uh, point of clarification. This is an entirely new slide, so there was some comments and questions done. Um, we were fielding this morning based on impacts to, to the occupants during the construction period. So I've just divvied it up into two sections. You know, how is Montessori school being impacted and how is the career center students being impacted? So on the Montessori side, you know, just there's kind of. I subdivided that into two sections that the biggest impacts are going to be during the major construction phase so anytime we're building a new the new complete new facility as in option four or uh, the the additions so that would be the, the most substantive impacts uh, and then to a much lesser extent anytime we're working within the existing career center building constructing the parking garage or the uh, site work because either the construction volume is a lot less or the location of that construction is more remote from the Montessori building itself. And then relative to impacts to the uh, career center students, uh, we thought it was important to distinguish that options one through three require, you know, major additions to that building, which are right next to the functioning school. Uh, so uh, obviously that has a, a more substantive impact. Uh, and that also it's very likely that some occupants in that building will move multiple times uh, to facilitate renovating the existing building. I think we we sort of described that verbally uh, when we met on Friday, but this sort of puts it on the on the paper. And then a distinction around option four, and that it keeps all major construction outside and away from the building, and it it requires just a single move once that facility is finished 
the uh, students within students and staff at the Career Center can move into the new facility. Yeah, I think it's worth noting that I think option four, which I guess was the preferred option, if I'm remembering correctly, would um, preferred APS staff um, option that would that would impact transportation during construction, like bus drop off for the Montessori, for instance, um, you know, because now there's a building there in the, instead of a entrance, you know, the bus entrance to the site off of um, Walter Reed. But. Yes, that's that's a good point. Th these don't speak to transportation impacts. That could be something that could could be incorporated into it. Um, just going back to the site plan, so that that kind of disruption would occur, Rosa, on both options one and four, because you're saying mm -hmm. you're taking you're taking right. away the the through lane for the for the buses, yeah. And then this this slide, uh, there's just some language here around the cost estimating process that is struck because it appears on a on a slide later on. Can I? And I'm I'm sorry. Um, I'm eating dinner while I'm sorry. It's but back right. on the the impacts, um, you know, she mentioned the transportation, but as far as um, construction staging area, you know, because you're so kind of tight there, would so, I mean, I guess it probably goes along with the transportation piece of it, but also just from a staging because you can't, you know, you can't stage obviously on Walter Reed, I, I would assume, which would mean you would have to do a lot of it in, in the parking lot. So would, would there be, again, not just interruptions to the, to the bus lane potentially, but during construction, would there be like less parking? Would the parking lot be potentially closed? It, it it could it could those are those are things that we would have to kind of dig into greater detail um yeah no so. worries i i just when she mentioned that you know kind of the rerouting of <laughs> buses i'm just thinking again how tight that parking lot is for teachers and stuff now that i could see that kind of being almost fully impacted um with that you know between like where the um community high school and the trailers or learning cottages, whatever your favorite word is, um, you know, there's not a lot of space as it is um, that that might have to be completely used. So yeah, just I guess the my thinking with that is um, is it's more of a temporary. I mean, certainly, I guess it's a phasing thing, but it's more of a temporary issue. Um, and certainly, if you were parking teachers off site temporarily for a couple years because of construction, I guess that's more stomachable in my mind than, you know, than than the issues of parking them off site forever, you know, like at, at the Heights or, you know, other, um, you know, or some of the considerations that were happening initially here uh, before they wanted to include, you know, definitely include the parking garage as part of the construction, you know, build out for the site. Um, but I think so I, I guess but that's definitely something to weigh uh, plus or minus. Um, I guess my thinking is, you know, I, obviously safety is important. And so that's why I was thinking that the transportation as it relates to bus drop off was more, maybe more important than the teachers having to walk, you know, off, you know, from a parking garage off Columbia Pike or something up, you know, because you, you can't drop them off too far. And certainly, um, oh, um highland now i'm drawing a blank on the the street that's on the um other side you know is so tight as it is with with you know buses trying to get in there or through there um just out i guess of the parking lot area you know for bus drop off and then parent drop off so um so i think that's a consideration um but I guess I didn't care as much about the teacher parking <laughs> during construction because it's, you know, temporary. Um, 
or a temporary issue, whereas I feel like the safety of the kids is, is paramount. Michael, you had a comment or you had your hand raised. I do. Thank you. <clears throat> I just want to bring it to the attention of the group. I'm not sure if everyone is aware. Uh, currently, we have a lease agreement for the parking structure located at the ECDC, EC Ethiopian Community Development Corporation. I'm going to butcher that. Um, which is just south of us. And I can just let me share the screen just real quick, Ben, just to show. Of course. <clears throat> just so that, because I feel like last time maybe some of these questions that came up about the parking. So this is the Career Center right here. All right. You know, this is where everyone currently sort of parks. And in this parking structure right here, um, we have an agreement with the Ethiopian Community Development Council. Sorry, uh, and it's the Highland Holdings uh, LLC. So we've worked with them, and they've been, uh, you know, very gracious in order to offer us parking. Uh, currently, right now, we have upped our lease parking, which is a um, hundred uh, spaces now. Originally, we had fifty spaces, and we just um, did a second amendment to our lease in order to uh, continue the 100 spaces at the garage um, with a escalation per year will increase per spot. So um, just want everyone to kind of understand that we already have lease parking off site currently now. So that's it. Um, I, d I do have questions or comments on the layouts. Um, that I thought about over the weekend, but I, I guess I was expecting to let you guys kind of run through those changes first, and then maybe I think we could kind of keep digging into the layouts and really kind of, you know, talk pros and cons maybe about some of those in more, in more detail as a committee, subcommittee. Sure, so um, I'll just keep flying through the revisions then. Um, we did so we separated the the two the cost slides on the two separate slides just to make the information a little more easy to digest and we added some graphic reminders of what the different options were so we have one for the base ed spec and then we we have the one from the for the alternative ed spec and the language from a previous slide was put on here to kind of clarify how we arrived and in, in, uh, at the revised construction cost and then uh, likewise, we added the graphic uh, on this slide to sort of summarize, um, that summarizes everything. We, we updated this slide to make it a little, little more clear what we were attempting to say. So um, <clears throat> since staff is recommending proceeding with option four, that has a high and a low price point. The second bullet uh, acknowledges that there was a certain set of money that is already identified for the project so that um, in the 23 to 32 CIP we would need to identify funding for for the balance of that um, and and that would occur as the last bullet said from from either future bonds or or potentially the capital reserve so we sort of walked through exactly what we were trying to get at and so what that means is that if the you know, based on the numbers presented, the, the this upcoming CIP would need to identify, you know, um, 139 or 121 million to support this this project. And then in response to some comments received earlier today, uh, we we were asked to consider putting some uh, language together around long term planning at the site. Um, there was the thought was that if if uh, staff were silent on kind of a future use of a vacant um, career center building, once the, the new facility is constructed, then it could create some anxiety within the neighborhood community and uh, uncertainty around that. So the text here is sort of our very first pass at, at identifying some of that language. Uh, and it would essentially be, um, you know, giving some guidance to to toward that long range planning. <clears throat> 
And uh, so it's it's acknowledging manageable enrollment and traffic at that site, sort of a nod to um, to community concerns that we've received in the past about the num the quant just the quantity of students who are going to be being served at that site at that location. Uh, and then within that, some subsets of uh, you know options for repurposing the existing career center building. Um, we have uh, separate CIP direction around this division-wide renovation plan that I think the FAC is going to dig into a little bit separately from that. So this direction would actually ask us to put the MPSA uh, building within that context to kind of uh, that was that was intended to be just uh, acknowledging basically whether that facility should continue to exist or whether we should we should um, uh, whether the cost to upgrade and to renovate that facility outweighed the benefit of it being on the site and if there was a some other lo uh, some other alternative that would be more uh, attractive and then uh, some discussion on uh, creating swing space. Um, this last bullet was related to um, the field space itself. So there, there could be, um, you know, an acknowledgement that we perceive with the, the main building itself, uh, but defer resolution of the field space until not this upcoming CIP, but the next one uh, sort of uh, certainly well before we finished that new career center facility, but where some of this other some of this other um, considerations around uh, site and, and uses of that site could influence the ultimate build out of what that field would be. Uh, so that was kind of our, our um, you know, logic behind that. And, and then I think that was that's it for the for the revisions. Any question on 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 the, the the new content that you've seen before we dig into some of the others? Can you I guess can you explain a little bit keep talking more about that last bullet about the field space? So um, so uh, you know obviously it's shown in different sizes here, but is if you push it off, I guess to a you know, okay, yeah, to the next, you know, to the future CIP, are you kind of saying that, um, I mean, I guess I'm thinking, okay, what if it doesn't get funded? Then what's there? That's sort of, okay, that's question number one. You know, question number two is, um, is it basically a decision in terms of what maybe happens to the Montessori school building that existed, that current building that, therefore would allow for additional chain, you know, something else happening on the site as it relates to the field. Um, and then I guess back to just generally, uh, you know, at the end of the BLPC, there was definitely talk with that last kind of presentation with the new building, et cetera, that the Montessori could was was going to move or could move into the career center once the career center was in this new its own building. This you know it's sort of like option four, but obviously it wasn't option four um, exactly. But um, so is that still on the table, or was that kind of completely removed from this presentation because it's you know push that off that decision down the road regardless? I mean. It certainly isn't something that has to happen right away, and then you might have swing space, but it could happen right away, and then you have swing space in the in the you know Montessori building, um, you know if Montessori moves to the career space, career center space. I mean, I guess there's tons of flexibility, and I understand that leaving that open allows for that to be determined later. But I'm just trying to understand if it doesn't happen, then you know, and certainly as it relates to the field, what gets built. I, I think the biggest thing we're trying to do is, is to provide the flexibility to figure out what these spaces are. <clears throat> you know, what is the existing building going to be used for? What is Montessori going to be used for? Um, we, we're looking at, you know, uh, renovations, you know, uh, division wide. 
Uh, we're going to be looking at capacities. We're going to be looking at the other facilities and, and maybe Montessori isn't even on this site in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what options do we have to use the existing career center building? Is it swing space? Is it torn down and made a field? Is it made, you know, that we have a lot of options to look at and I don't think we're going to solve them uh, right away. And I think we're going to have to get community involvement. And number two, uh, one of the things that came out in the two by two today is, you know, well, let's do all of this now. And it's like, well, then we're back to the hundred and, you know, the 260 million that we can't do at one time. We have to take this one step at a time. So let's take the time to, to decide what it needs to be as a community. Um, <clears throat> and I think at the same time, we have to address it only because the community is going to say, oh my gosh, you could have an 800 student existing building, you're gonna have 1700 in that building, you got the Montessori building, when in fact, when this is all said and done, Montessori is going to cost us uh, $25 million just to replace the, I mean, uh, the um, HVAC system and do those upgrades. And we still haven't really addressed all of the other deficiencies in that building. So maybe it makes sense that that building is not there anymore from a cost standpoint, but we are going to decide that in the next year. And if we, we don't want to build a field, then rip it up. You know, because and and maybe there there will be a small field the size that we're showing in option four, and maybe when Montessori is removed, you know, there's enough space there to put a larger field where the Montessori building is, and you end up with those two fields. I think those are things we'll have to look at as we move forward, but I think that the thought is is that we want to make sure we take the time, you know, and FAC provides some of the input, I believe in looking at the, the renovations of these and what these things could be and what are the options <clears throat> that we have. So we don't just come up with an idea, do a pricing, say, oh, we can't afford that, move on. You know, we've done that already. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that there's it's a thoughtful process. Does that answer your question? I think it does. I think, though, I guess the idea of potentially having that field kind of the cost of the field pushed off to a different CIP. You know, I get that that's flexible, um, but it just seems like, you know, that might also raise flags or be a concern for the community because then no, they don't get a field here at all. Like, or, or you know what I mean? Like, like they're so concerned about the pool being here or not being here or allowing for future space for a pool, <laughs> you know, let alone a field, you know, the field, I think, but, but yeah, I don't want to rip up a field and then put it right back after we, you know, a bigger field after we, you know, if we demolish the Montessori, you know, I 100% I agree with that. It's just, you know, I just, it just could look suspicious, I guess. Well, maybe we just include something there to adjust the field based on the decisions made and not necessarily say it's in the next CIP. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can Include it in this CIP as it is, and then modify it in a future CIP. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think I think Rosa, our our concern was more around the you know, not wanting to invest in 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 something and and create a, a brand new field that a couple of years right around we would tear up and do something different. So I think it was more of us as uh, pl planning around being good stewards around those decisions that haven't been made yet. Uh, and I think there's there's a way we could capture that maybe to address some of your some of your comments. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Rebecca, Rebecca. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Well, now I, I think just along that line, having um, being the co-chair of the school bond this year and having a similar issue with the Heights building, yeah. I just wanted to echo um, there's a lot of um, angst about this new $11 million, um, you know, that people are like, what do you mean? You know, why wasn't it in, you know, again, it's like, you know, sort of some people feel like it was deceitful, you know, I mean, that's the strong word and that's probably not the word I'm looking for, but, um, but they're like, you know, it's only two years old. What do you mean? You want 11 more million dollars? Why wasn't it all transparent in the beginning? And like I said, I know the fire station and my guess is it probably was in some presentation, you know, somewhere at some point, but you know, 
they don't remember that now. Um, and I'm just guessing because I did not go back and read everything. <laughs> um, so from a public perspective, even if 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 that whole plan, like you said, was 260, I mean, I really do think if we want people to continue to support the bonds and things like that, we, we should be as transparent as possible and say just what you guys are saying here, you know, may, maybe not, you know, but there has to be a campus wide. It's going to be a multi step process. It's going to be a multi bond process. You know, again, if you know, even just say we think at the end, the reason we're, we're, we're doing it over the course of several cycles is the cost to spread it out. But we have these major things that need to happen um, again, just so that when that bond comes around and if you're asking for field money that wasn't included in the original bond, you can say, you know, these were all discussed and you can actually have a kind of a snapshot, you know, that helps whoever the bond chairs are, you know, at that point or remind people that this was always planned for a phase two, right? There's always, you know, phase two coming for the Career Center campus and be very clear about that. Um, because like I said, I think that's been the, the the most vocal thing we've heard during this bond season about that's, I think, a similar situation at the Heights. Yeah, I, I agree. And memories are very short. And, and I, I live through the Heights, so I understand the, the issue um, with regard to that and, and how it happened and, and what happened. And, and quite honestly, it was pulled out by the use permit. So that's what happened to the to the field. So that, that wasn't our choice and that wasn't, I would never want to build half a building again. <laughs> so I think we've actually, our, our, I think um, Lisa was making some comments or changes to slide 25 as we were talking. And maybe it's not a bond issue, it's just a revisit the field issue based on the, the items above, so. <clears throat> that that was good yeah. good conversation. Yeah, uh -huh. and I had actually as one of my comments um, from looking at the options a little closer over the weekend was the you know was potentially showing like a dotted line for what the full a full size field might look like in that space if Montes if the Montessori was not there you know so like almost like well yeah here's this is this is what could be built but this is maybe you know what it might look like the final you know, a final phase after phase two for option four if Montessori is not there, but but not saying that that's a. Um, that that's definitely part of anything that's, you know, in stone because it's the next phase, you know, the next, definitely the next CIP, definitely the next, you know. Uh, um, ben and Jeff, uh, as as we've been talking about this, I was looking uh, at the at the site from an aerial perspective, looking at the looking at how it fits into the larger neighborhood context, uh, because there's some the street connectivity is an issue that is not really in your control, but it's I have a feeling it it may become an issue when you start talking to Arlington County about this. Um, you know the the preferred option number four. I could understand why it's a preferred option. It, it, you know, it gives you a lot more flexibility and sort of minimizes the pain um, of, of all the things that would happen on site. But um, 8th Street, which is still, I believe, a public street, even though it doesn't really feel like a public street, um, does extend through the site and connects over to Highland Street. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I know, you know, from my experience working in Arlington, that there's policies about avoiding super blocks, about trying to break up large blocks whenever possible, and and that may be um, that may be an issue that the county raises, and they they may really want to see Eighth Street continue across the site as a, as an actual street, which is really which would really put a a cramp on on option four. Um, so, you know, I don't know if it's really going to be an issue, but before we get too excited about option four, just know that you may want to do some vetting uh, with the county a little bit first before we get too excited about it, because of all the 
four options, number four is the one that, or well, no, actually option one also takes takes out street connectivity altogether. Um, but option four isn't really a whole lot better because it's kind of wiggles through the site in like an internal alley system. Um, the other thing about the street network, so this is all coming back from my my urban design and site planning issues is the county also isn't really fond of multiple t intersections and option four basically would have you know the existing t intersection at 7th street then another t intersection <clears throat> at 8th street and then another t intersection at what would be the unnamed bus alley um and they're probably going to say you know please consolidate these and if and preferably not at a T intersection, which again would would drive things towards, I'd say the Eighth Street intersection, since there's already a Ninth Street intersection. Um, so, so the the those are the things that I would flag if I was with the county because you don't want to make um, Walter Reed Drive less functional, you know, and maybe you know if if, you, if it makes it any less functional for people, I think the county would have a hard time approving it. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate the comments and, and we have had a lot of conversations. The, the county and with the complete streets they're looking at, they don't consider 8th Street a continuing, a continuing, continuing street, um, but they, they would prefer we have no uh, connections to Walter Reed because of the way they're working the complete streets and the seventh street uh, intersection with Walter Reed is going to be rebuilt. Uh, it's in the middle of design right now. Uh, but yeah, it's it's it is something to have the conversation with them again. Uh, we have had it before um, and and we will, I'm sure, continue on with that. But uh, one of the things that that they they've talked about as we were looking at some of the other options is not to have any connections on the water read would be their preference. Can, um, do you recall whether or not they were going to put bike lanes like the um, yeah. you know the bike lane then parking then <coughs> the street on water read? They haven't designed that yet. They're waiting to find out what direction uh, schools is looking at doing, and then we have to to work with them on designing what the street will be. Uh, one of the commitments we've made to our disabled community is that we will have uh, accessible parking spaces at the main entrance of our buildings. So that will affect how uh, the complete streets is fitted out at the, the front of the building. Uh, and how we do that and, and accommodate our need with their need and the, and the bike lanes. Uh, but yes, it's it's all part of it. They've actually put this block on hold uh, until we get this, um, you know, this process uh, further along. Yeah, but, it, but uh, Rose, I think the goal is to eventually have protected bike lanes on that on that road, particularly since there will be on street parking, right? Assuming some kind of on street parking, either mm -hmm. accessible on street parking or a combination of that plus regular parallel, parallel parking. So there may, I think we'll probably see a protected bike lane solution in there somewhere. Yeah, I think that's their preference. Again, it, it, we'll have to figure it out. We're, we're going to planning on working on that together. Uh, as yeah, we, and that certainly would impact like what, you know, I mean, the, that kind of supports the idea that the county wouldn't want an entrance, like a drive-in entrance on Columbia Pike. I mean, sorry, on Walter Reed, because you're basically crossing you know that re really strange kind of you know park car and then bike path and or you know that there was a similar issue with um what at w and l is that correct i think that they were looking at yeah there there have been other places they've looked at but yes we're, we're going to work with them once we determine what we're, we're doing with the site mm -hmm. which is um, which is kind of interesting because then you think you know that puts all the all the traffic, including all the buses, on um, was that Highland Street, which is you know partially residential and pretty skinny. Yeah, but I think also if you were to think about or try to look at what it could be, if you delete Montessori, delete demo Montessori, 
is then you might have something that comes in on Highland and comes out on um, 7th or something. Like you might have an L now, like, you know, as opposed to a U kind of in and out on Highland. I mean, there's a, there big, it just opens up a lot more possibilities, I think. But who knows? I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, unless, you know, you lay out that transportation kind of overlay on every single one of these, I don't, I think it's hard to imagine or work through completely those issues. Um, however, yeah, it would be good to show that, you know, graphically show that we put some thought into it. Though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, all. That will all be developed as part of the uh, the concept design. <clears throat> we will be working through all of that. We're going to have a new transportation study, and we're going to be working with the county as we move forward on that with the BLT BFRC. But it'll be the concept design of one of these four, correct? I mean, more than likely, yes. Uh, the, the board hasn't acted yet, but you know, they they may pick one. They could also pick two. Again, okay. I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, I guess what I was getting at, and maybe a little bit of what Rosa was in, in, about to imply, was it it would be good if we don't let you know that we don't relegate the transportation, the surrounding transportation issues to being a byproduct of a choice that was made earlier, because then you're just mitigating, right? We're trying to minimize the negative impacts of a decision that we've already made, you know, rather than incorporating that decision incorporating those issues into the initial decision mm -hmm. um, you know i think it is important enough that we don't <clears throat> try to you know try you can't really make all these decisions incrementally right about the, the programming and then you do the site and then you're okay now we have to figure out what the transportation is going to do and you're convoluting yourselves into all sorts of weird things when you realize how the loading has to happen it it would be nice if i mean not that you know obviously these do have loading and service shown um i don't know i i just feel like it would be prudent to have maybe another check-in with arlington county with the transportation folks about those issues just so that we don't get surprised later and find ourselves doing weird things to try to make the transportation work better <clears throat> yeah so i mean i don't know i mean i guess you know in the end you could resolve some of the issues even after the fact but but then that takes a lot longer like if suddenly highland was one way or <laughs> i mean you know but right now it's a really skinny street for as much drop off and pick up traffic as it has on it because of Montessori. So obviously, you know, if Montessori is not there, then that might change things. But certainly if it's an option program, it doesn't change, you know, things. I mean, as soon as it's an option, then you have parents driving as much as bus riders, as much, you know, because there's no walkers or very few walkers. I guess <clears throat> the next question. So, okay, so speaking of loading, um, all of the options show loading except for option on the existing career center except for option four. So option four does not show loading for the existing career center, assuming that's gonna remain. Um, the other options do kind of show loading into that building. Um, but of course that's, you know, but um, so I didn't know if the intent was then to have a front loading uh, across from the field or if it would be something separate or kind of combined with the parking coming off of ninth or something, but. Um, I, I think honestly, we just hadn't resolved it yet. <laughs> we yeah. sort of, we sort of put a, we didn't advance a kind of a, how the loading function particularly would would work at the existing career center facility. I mean, certainly there's the option off of off of Highland or off of uh, Ninth there, uh, but it's it's unresolved currently. <laughs> And and then I guess the next question. OK, so I have uh, real, similar since we're talking tight site issues. Um, Rose, the, you're talking about the, where it notes loading. That's where the loading dock is, so to speak. That's not student loading. No, 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 that's loading dock. Right. But you don't have that on option four. For the existing career center, you show loading on the new building. 
Uh, I think it's still in the same place as it is on option one. Okay. Okay. So there might just not be so many it, trees. It, right I there. don't think they put the label on it. Okay. Or yeah. Um, okay. So then the next question, next question was just, or a comment. This was a good comment was that the, um, kind of easy access to the library, to the county's library in options one and two, obviously that kind of gets hurt. You know, there's very, it makes it very difficult for a book drop off. Certainly, you know, like the, having that little drive that goes under the library overhang, um, you know, allows you to kind of pull out of the way, jump out of your car, throw your book in the book drop and keep going. And that's not, um, really possible on option one or two and then even uh you know and it seems like it might be hard to kind of have anywhere to pull over and get out of the way and now you have to run farther to kind of drop your book off unless of course they i don't know have you know like a big old dr book drop off on walter reed or something which but anyways that was kind of just something that i saw with those two options that that it makes ingress and egress running in and out of the library very quickly, it makes it very difficult since now you have to kind of find some parking, you know, farther away and, and make more of a committed effort to get to the library. Um, and then, uh, would the Montessori get kind of, I guess, in all of the renditions, you know, they they're losing the Montessori and or, you know, elementary school kind of age kids are losing that playground. And, you know, you're kind of showing that they just keep the ball field. Um, but I didn't know if, you know, I guess that can be pushed off to the field um, question, but whether or not they get a playground or how, you know, what kind of um, amenities the Montessori might get, whether they stay on this campus or, you know, or not, but um, yeah, our, all, all of the options where the, where the ball field is shown, that becomes the playground. It's, it'll be a custom designed playground for Montessori. Okay. It, it, yeah, that was never noted on the drawings. Okay. Yeah, you could probably just call out playground and then, you know, that might be enough of a, you know, to say, look, we're not drawing a playground. We're kind of still drawing a ball field, but they'll get a playground. That might at least help with that um, option. And then last is option one versus option two. Do you have a sense of what programmatic elements are in the existing building to remain versus the two story and four story additions? So at, at least with the BLPC, a lot of the phasing was discussing, you know, we rip off, we build something new and then that allows us to rip off the back portion um you know which had a lot of so we were essentially trying to phase and build new for the um you know the career center kind of spaces the um tech um you know the automotive those kinds of things you know would be added added on as you know an, an addition and then you could demolish the existing stuff um and i guess i was just wondering if you you know is this more has any thought gone into that as to kind of the phasing of those things, or is it just, you know, here's the square footage? Well, the phasing was actually part of the design process. It was worked with the estimators. Uh, the We aren't showing where spaces are, because really all we're trying to show here is massing and that we have the spaces are all accounted for. Um, in some instances, you know, like for instance, in option three, it's very similar to the 2020 option where we're going to have to create the addition on Highland before we tear off the shops because that's mm -hmm. where the shops go. But in the mm -hmm. other cases, that's not necessarily as true. Um, in, in some options, they were looking at the middle school spaces on the second floor of the uh, renovated um, existing building, so to speak. I mean, it, it depended on, on the option and, and how phasing was looked at but yes it was looked at but these are sketch plans these aren't even developed to the extent of the um concept plan so we will we will have to, to be looking through that as we move through the process in the next step in the next phase uh i've got another uh, question about the as, as i'm looking at these different career center uh building options 
I noticed that options three, the ones shown on three and four, are uh, they're skinnier, right? They're not the buildings are not as deep as the ones in one and two. So is that based on the assumption that we would we tear off one of those bays? I you're guess. you're talking about the existing building? Yeah, yeah, the existing. Yeah, the one. existing building. If you look, you can see the red dotted line. That is the outline of the existing building of where it is. So you can see on option three, that yeah. entire bay gets removed, and on option four, mm -hmm. that entire bay gets removed. Okay. Something that you know, something that came up particularly with with COVID, right, was this the whole issue about you know fresh air air not relying on HVAC systems to provide uh, all the air for a building. And I'm just wondering if that might want that if that might need to be a consideration uh, when we're when we're dealing with any new building on site, right? Not having to rely on active HVAC for for landlocked interior spaces, right? The new building along uh, Walter Reed is actually looks pretty narrow. Looks like it's maybe a single, uh, a double loaded corridor, and that's it. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering, is there a reason? And really, only option four is the only one that makes the building skinnier and provides more uh, perimeter, more surface area for the perimeter. Because um, option three, it lobs off part of the building, but then it builds back, right? And actually builds back bigger. Um, you know, this is, uh, so that that's just a consideration. I'm just wondering if, because I think somebody will probably, probably bring it up. Like, you know, what are we relying on active HVAC systems? Can we do more passive systems somehow to provide fresh air and light? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of, of daylighting options and and in with all of them and, and we're we're looking at the learning environment and how we do that and how we we work with that. I mean the current building has very little daylight. Yeah. Uh, and and that is something that's going to be improved. With some of those additions, you're you're looking at four or five stories, you know, so you are going to be bringing daylight into more of the perimeter than you do now. Um, the option three actually has a courtyard. Um, yeah, option three has a courtyard in the middle of it to bring daylight in. Oh, okay. And um, you know, there, there's, there's, it's that will all be considered as we would move forward because we want to bring in as much natural light and views as is possible uh, with all of the options. And I think the buildings are, are, you know, bigger than 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 you imagine. It's not. It's larger than a double loaded corridor. In, in the yeah. case of most of the, the the options, you know, it's the width of the gym, yeah. for instance. So Rebecca, I'll acknowledge your question in the chat box. So, so and it's, you know, does option three even make sense anymore given the decision to uh, move community high school and why would we leave Fenwick? So the reason, the reason that we left it in place uh, is simply because it would have it would have uh, increased the project cost to demolish that facility and not have a plan to put something back in it at least immediately. So we left it there as a cost you know cost reduction measure, uh, and and that uh, that building you know that building and or that site area could be preserved for some other future use. I know that you know in part of our study in. 2020 that area uh, i think somebody in the blpc brought up or they wanted us to to see if a pool would fit kind of where the fanwood building was and, and and it did fit so that it, not necessarily that we would be advocating to keep the building long term it's just an opportunity that that space that square footage on site is available for any use that could be programmed in the future yeah, I think that's one of the reasons we were we were looking at at you know pulling Fenwick the Fenwick building out of there because it get, it pulled the plug or pulled the cork out of our problem um, and gave us a, a different way to look at the site. So, um, I mean, it was built as a medical office building and it's still pretty much a medical office building. It's not really a school space. Uh, they had plans to do major renovations there, but they chose not to do it to save the dollars 
and they pretty much used it as it was with minor modifications and cosmetic uh, modifications. So <clears throat> I think I think Ben hit the nail on the head. It's not something we really want to keep, but if there was a use that we could use it for, you know, then then you know if we have an office need that somebody wanted to use it, they could do that. But yeah, I agree with you. Um, I wasn't happy that we had an option that it that it stayed. <laughs> It's not a bad site to put a building. It's just not, not the Fenwick building. Correct. Yeah. We well, it's, it's almost like you could take each of these diagrams and almost overlay, like, a, you know, I was discussing kind of that, like if you outline sort of, okay, here could be a bigger field if you, loot, if you demolish Montessori for option four. It's almost like you could take each of these diagrams and outline, you know, here, as soon as we leave, big career center and add additions to it. We're not, we're obviously not going to demolish that anytime soon, but then right. like you could almost detail, like this is all the flexible space that we have for future, you know, cause it's a surface parking lot. It's Montessori, you know, and, and, you know, an open space right now, the field or whatever it might be. So in some ways, you know, one obviously is, you know, gives you a lot of option, even with the four story building coming down the side to also kind of, you know, you have almost the whole right side of the site that is, you know, potentially flexible for lots of different things. Option four, um, if you're looking at it in that sense, is actually maybe less, it leaves you a little less flexibility on like way down the line future, because now you have two portions of the site filled up with buildings that you plan on keeping you know, potentially, I guess, career center and the five story new building, and you really only have the Montessori, and then you have um, a, a parking garage on the other side. So you're probably not going to demolish that in the next 50 years or and 30 still years. Have you know. the field. Yeah. Well, I, um, I, I think though that actually the, the option four does give you the most option because if you looked at go back to the career center working group, um, Walter Reed and 9th Street is where the density was intended to be. So you actually, when that library moves out of that building and we don't need it for any other use and we have, say, a secondary seat need, for instance, you could actually, and we know that it'll fit, you can fit a um, comprehensive high school attached to a career center if you wanted to. You could have a nine-story school if you wanted to. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think you do have a lot of flexibility with four. Okay. That it actually sets the site up to be more uh, attuned to the to the career center working group. The only thing that we didn't quite achieve is we have a little bit more height on Walter Reed, but I don't think anybody's going to complain about height on Walter Reed as long as it steps down to 7th Street. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Agree with that. And I, I guess option four, I think overall looks great because I, I would say in terms of long term flexibility, I think, th you know, that's definitely your 20 to 30 year perfect plan. You know, you put a big field there. If you demolish Montessori, you keep the career center. You've got lots of options where you could do an addition on top of the career center, the existing building to bring up the higher you know density there. Yeah. And uh, above grade precast parking garage, you know, not the worst thing to, to have to take down, um, you know, but I think, so I would say that gives you good, you know, flexibility. I, I guess what I was almost looking at, and I'm just looking at it from a different view in that sense, because I, I still don't think that option three is the right um, choice, <laughs> but I guess using that analysis, like if Fenwick and Montessori both are kind of demolishable because they're, you know, extended past their useful life, then you have essentially the entire right side of the field to deal with. But it's really, but you're right, you're not going to build something huge along Highland or 7th. So in, in some ways, you know, it doesn't, it does, still doesn't give you all the, you know, the, the long term flexibility, but well, you still have the, you still have that surface parking lot and the Fenwick site that you can put all your density mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, agree. Really like in the future, if you built three, in the future you could build 
the five story new building, you know, yeah. but but now you've done it out of sequence and made it more expensive, you know, by building the five story in option four, by building the five story new building in option four. Now it allows you to kind of do something else elsewhere and and I did, you know, who knows, 20 years down the road, 10 years. I'm also wondering, you know, the, the other uh, odd thing about option four is that it's the only one that doesn't have a full size field on it. And I'm wondering is, um, there's, was there a constraint keeping us to five stories? Why, why it has that um, extra wing on it in the back that impinges on what would be field space? Like, what if it had a, that end piece had a narrower footprint, like basically didn't extend past the Fenwick building? Um, could that addition, could that density, could that um, square footage go on top and make it a five and a half story, six story building? I think pot potentially, David, there's there. Um, I mean, Rosa, to your question earlier about how much thought went into these plans, I mean, that quite a, quite a lot. So on the on option floor footprint. For instance, the the design team was always evaluating, you know, what has to have great access, and and what, uh, you know, because there are elements like the auto tech, the auto body stuff that, of course, would well, not of course, but ideally, it's located at grade, and so you don't have to shift uh, cars with elevators or such, uh, and things like the gymnasium. So there there are program elements that were prioritized to be at the great at the ground floor. You know, some even some of the CTE spaces that are more public outward facing like cosmetology or such are or are identified to be prime candidates for ground floor space. So that would be something that we would um, certainly revisit in the in the concept design phase, because you're, you're right. There's a the larger the building footprint, the the more consequent or the you know, the, the, the consequences of field size get smaller. So that's certainly something that we would have kind of reinvestigate or investigate more fully in as the design develops. Um, another question about the site utilization in the future. There was in the working group, so before the BLPC, there was, I think, some looking at whether or not, you know, a full-size field and a track, I guess. You know, there were some layouts of, of that over top of the site and um, that could not fit in. C can that or could that could that or could that not fit in in, say, option four? Like like, in other words, if you lost Montessori, would you, is there ever enough space on here for the track as well as the field? So I know that. Uh in the spring when we studied this when the whole concept sort of the multi-phased concept involved relocating Montessori into the existing career center building and, and improving that site we had a couple different scenarios shown there so one one of them was you know two uh, Jeff you ought to help me out I think it was like two full-size fields stacked up one on t one right next to each other and another was a, a stadium like um environment where you have a, a, a track running around the field. Um, I, I, I'd have to sort of refresh my mind about those concepts because option number four is very similar to one that we presented this spring as part of that. So I, I'd have to revisit some of those materials, but I, I believe that that kind of uh, use will fit on the, on the site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeff, I'm not that, sure it's necessary, you know, but it just was something that I think that working group maybe looked at initially and then because of the site constraints at that time we were like well definitely can't fit that but we can fit a full we can fit a field and then that was part of the BLPC's charge was to obviously fit that field on there along with you know and then that kind of you know without demolishing Fenwick that kind of forced um, the hand in terms of you know where you could fit the field and what you were going to do with the career center with the phasing, like yeah. it, there wasn't really a lot of we options. Did you talk know. about the fields and and how that benefits or doesn't benefit the the facility and the for the for an educational standpoint, we don't need a full size field for for the the program that's here. It's no different than the Heights building, which doesn't have a full size field. 
-hmm. and won't have a full size field even with the uh, the field that gets put on. It's basically going to be a practice field for their um, ultimate frisbee practices. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the board actually, when they told us to look at option four, we said that we couldn't get a full size field, and they said that's not a problem. Do it with a, with a smaller field. So mm -hmm. that, that was direction that we had received. Now, if we could have fit it, I'm sure we would have. But you have to remember that, you know, not only do we have the bus loop uh, issues, but we also have receiving and also the entrance to the garages uh, for the auto body, which is a required mm -hmm. program that for yep. you. Okay, good point. <clears throat> I, I think we're going to, I think that's why we wanted to make sure that we have the opportunity to look at the future of the MPSA and, and the existing Career Center building, I think, as we move forward and, and, and you know, maybe a larger field will fit on here, but that's not the, the ultimate for the, well, I guess if they have an ultimate team, it is, but it's a, uh, it's not the ultimate uh, need for the program that's going to be in this building. Um, you know, Margaret would have been perfectly happy with the grass field where the relocatables were. In fact, that's what they are using as their field. You know, it's, it's for phys ed. So a, a you square. have nothing right now. So What's that? yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> exactly. But you know, a, a square field could work for this program. Um, is it ideal for the community? Probably not. But you know, again, that's something that we we will look through as we move forward. And again, this is step one of this site, and that's even some of the board members I think forget that. And it's like, well, can't we do this and this and this and this? And yes. But we'll be back at two hundred and sixty million dollars, which we don't have the funding for. So, hope that's helpful. Was there and and I, because I don't have this you know deck like in front of me like to to look through. But was there um, or are you considering what I think um, Rosa was saying as far as some what what I would call like the full campus vision. Right, you know, like overlay, it could, you know, these are different things sort of in a phase two that it could potentially, you know, with the flex space, um, you know, what identify the, these would be flex spaces in option one, option four. And then again, these are other potentials if Montessori goes away, you, you know, or do you <clears> think <throat> that, that would, um, again, I'm just leaning into making sure that everybody's being as transparent as possible there that there most likely will be a phase two you know um you know so is there a way to sort of say this is this is what we're going to do right now this is what we have but but potentially this is kind of the more of an end vision of this campus i think as we move forward with with the conceptual design design development as we move forward we're going to look further into that as we get more input and information. Uh, our problem is, is right now we don't have the time to study it and we would be be shooting from the hip and we'd be putting something out there that uh, some people are going to fall in love with and never let us forget that we had said that we were thinking about doing that. Yeah, that's true. So our, our thought is to let's let's do what we know, which is we need to take care of the Career Center and potentially that additional 450 uh, additional seats if 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 enrollment projections by next spring show that that needs to be built now or should be planned to be built later so yes I, I I don't disagree with what you're saying but I think at this point we have to focus on the funds available and what the board's direction is uh, to move forward but yes I think we, we need to be looking at how does this site further develop down the road and and based on need and based on budget So, um, so where does the pool go? I'm just kidding. Uh, that was board direction too. No pool. <laughs> it's on the roof. It's on the roof, like all the new fancy apartment buildings. Oh yeah. Stuff. Infinity Edge. Oh, now, now you're talking. Now we're spending money we don't have. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, hey. I don't think I have any other comments. I don't know if, you know. Um... Yeah, that's what I was going to say to everyone. I was like, I, I noticed that John G 
uh, joined. I didn't know if he had anything to say or if he's available to talk. So I just wanted to make sure everyone had the opportunity. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Hey, uh, so no, I, I plenty, but I don't. I hopped on so late. I didn't want to waste anyone's time with uh, questions or comments. Um, can I? Is there a way I can get this presentation um, to look at? Wednesday afternoon, I think, uh, Lisa. Right? Yeah, we're still working. We're we're still making changes based on the two by twos. Yeah, we have two by two in the morning and a two by two in the afternoon. So how about is this a proposal then that I could share with the group? We have these two recordings for meeting one and meeting two. Can we make those available Tuesday close of business? I mean Wednesday close of business. I think so. I think that's reasonable, but I you know this is new. I don't know the rules here. Right. I understand. But I'm just trying to, you know. Can we get back and figure out tomorrow what we do? Yeah, let's just send a note to the group, Elisa, when we know what we can what we can dole out when yeah. we can do it. Yeah. I just I, don't like, I just don't want to offend the board. Thank you. That would be that would be helpful. Any uh, words of wisdom, Michael? <laughs> no, I don't have any really words of wisdom. I, I did have I did have an observation though. I wanted to make about potential. As has we looked into any requirements for ADA parking when it comes to the library and the distance? It's it's probably going to end up being curbside. That's what I was leaning towards, but I didn't want to go ahead and say that because of the what happened at our other facilities so okay now I, th I think we we are in the process of well we just installed our first um true ada accessible parking spaces on quinn street if nobody's seen them uh, they're they're already created and we are going to be starting them at fleet uh, very shortly but we will be providing them at all all places but it's basically a um what is it a 13 foot wide parking space between the curb and, and the edge of your parking. So, you know, if you have a disabled passenger, you, you park at the street edge and you have that five feet of space to get somebody in and out. If you're a disabled driver, you can pull into the curb and you have five feet to, to get yourself in and out of the vehicle protected. Yeah. Especially yeah, that's right. 13 feet. And I was just curious and that's the way I know that all those details will be figured out later. I just we were all talking about parking and I was looking at the parking deck and I was like, oh, how are they going to get to the library? So, OK, good. Yeah, and, and uh, the nice thing is that we do have some, you know, an indentation currently in, in the street there that that has a, some additional space, some additional width. Um, so hopefully we can be able to work with that. But again, that's something we will be working with the county on uh, as we move forward. And with that, I don't really have anything else. So perhaps um, we'll uh, send out an email in regard to John's request. Um, hopefully we can get something sent out tomorrow as to when we can deliver the information. And then if no one else has any other uh, questions, I guess we're done. Yeah, I just wanted to thank staff for making time for us last week and today, you know, and presenting to us early and things and getting some of our input. And it, it certainly the time last week was well spent just to kind of see where we were so that we could digest that over the weekend it was really helpful. So thank you. Our pleasure. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for thanks for inviting us. Don't we have another one of these sessions coming up? Um, yeah, I think on the twenty. I don't. I guess Monday the twenty fifth. Uh, oh, I guess yeah. You just yeah. Yeah, next Monday. Uh, two Mondays from now. Two Mondays from now. Oh, two Mondays. I'm sorry. In yeah. Yeah. Information. No. 
Yeah, before the action. Correct. Yes. Next Monday we have our regular standing fact meeting and then the following Monday we're going to have a follow up as to how the board received this information on Thursday night of next week. Oh wait, not this week. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I have to do a facilities report for uh, next Monday, don't I, Michael? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. All right, we're all good, I think. <laughs> Hopefully everyone can uh, get some rest. I'm going to make dinner. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. All right, y'all. I'll be over for the sauerkraut, Michael. I'll, yeah, I'll just walk over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on over, Jeff. Look, Michael, you got sauerkraut going. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, I'm not making it, but I, mean, I think so. That was the plan. <laughs> Mine's waiting for me. All right, y'all. You have a good evening. Thank you all. See y'all soon. Bye. Thank you.